Erica. Hi. How are you, darling? Good to see I'm you. Good. How are you? Good to see you too. Look at your face. I'm... Hi. I know. I know. It's been forever. I know. Too long, man. We just been stuck in this house. It's hard to see anybody. Right. Stuck in the house and we in the house board. Child, I'm the house board. <laughs> We're in the house. <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. But aside from all that, how have you been? I've been good. I've been as good as I can be, you know, considering the circumstances. But don't, don't want to sound churchy, but God has definitely been taking care of me the past couple of months. So I've been doing really, really good. So how, much, how have you been doing? Uh, same, same. Absolutely. I feel blessed and, and grateful to be, be covered during these times. For real. For real. And creating in the interim, I'm sure you're doing that as well. Yes, I'm. I'm doing my best with the creations. At first, it was a little hard, but once I chilled out, stuff started coming. So, yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. That is awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. So, for the people that don't know who this fabulous young lady is, Miss Erica Janae, we are going to uh, tell the people who you is. Tell. You are an artist. You are a musician. You are a mix engineer. You are an entrepreneur. You are one of my favorite people to see out and about town because it's always going to be hugs and love and good energy. Um, you're from the state of Delaware. Tell me about Delaware. I don't know any people from Delaware. <laughs> my mom said don't talk about my home. <laughs> I'm sorry, mama. Hey, mama. <laughs> um, nah, Delaware. Um, well, First off, if anyone didn't know, it's the first state of the United, the United States of America. So, Boom. I'm from the first state. But that part. That nerdy moment. Um, Delaware was, it was cool to grow up in. I, I made a lot of friends. Um, I have a huge, huge family. So, they were like my family first. I have at least 35 first cousins just on my mom's side. So, a lot of time in Delaware, I spent time with them, like, after church and stuff. And, you know, it was it was stuff to do because it's such a small state. So it was stuff to do, like, bowling and stuff. But um, when I would get bored, me and my cousins would just sing songs, make up songs. Like, we rewrote um, an Aaliyah song before. We were saying, talking about somebody's neck, y'all. <laughs> like, you know, we were neck that's mad disrespectful but <laughs> it's like being in a small town you don't really have a lot to do so you tend to get creative especially as you know a young black kid because sometimes <laughs> there isn't really much for us to do so but yeah that word was cool I guess it didn't have everything I needed as far as music or at least I didn't notice it yet but <laughs> once I realized that I was like dang now I understand where a lot of my musical abilities come from because there's a lot of talented people there. So, yeah, but Delaware is low-key lit. Don't sleep on it. I just want y'all to know. Don't sleep, y'all. Okay, y'all, you've seen me at, like, events and me dancing and stuff. And Absolutely. Know, we we dances, okay? We we dance. So the, that's that Delaware energy. Gotcha. That, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. That's enough about Delaware, I guess. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. That was a full-blown commercial. So y'all go visit Delaware. It's lit. Put them on the back. You know what I'm saying? It's lit, y'all. <laughs> so music has been a part of your family and your background your entire life? Mm-hmm. My, nice. my mom sings, too. She actually did a lot of um, live plays, a lot of them. She sang a lot of groups. She directed, like, four choirs, two of them. I was in, well, technically, I was in all of them because I was always there. <laughs> you have no choice. <laughs> but, yeah, I, you know, church kids, we we have to. But mm -hmm. I always enjoyed it. So, it's all, actually, I learned that my biological grandfather, he yes. was a musician, too. And he could play, like, mad instruments. So, it definitely oh. comes through the family a lot. That is so. So you mentioned that Delaware didn't necessarily have everything you needed musically, but then you supplemented that by going off and studying at the Berkeley College of Music, the yeah. world-renowned Berkeley <laughs> College of 
<laughs> um, what did that education add to your your musical palette, if you will? Um, honestly, it added the somewhat mock experience of the entertainment industry because <laughs> Berkeley. We all were super close and super cool, but at the same time, you know, there's students, like, people will come and literally take students out of classes and take them on tours and stuff. So it was also kind of competitive, but it gives you that edge because you're around so many amazing musicians, your teachers and the students. It's like, you can't go wrong with learning the experience within your school before going to, you know, whatever you want to do as an artist or an entrepreneur or a manager or whatever. So I think right. most of the stuff I learned was just being on the campus. I actually, the first big show I ever did was the New Kids on a Block reunion tour. And that was just crazy. It was my first time performing in front of like tens of thousands. It was like 30,000 people. And I got to meet Natasha Benningfield, but all of my education really came from I know she's like. I love her. I, I love her. About her all day. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Long story short, I learned a lot in classes, but but I learned a lot more from my peers and interacting with them and my teachers and just seeing celebrities coming on the campus talking about, mm, "You fire, let's go." I thought that was super dope. Wow! Wow! That's crazy. So then you went from there to finish your education and your degree in music business at, um, I'm sorry, here in Atlanta. I wrote it down. And here it is. Can't yeah. It here. yeah. Oh, there we go. Yes, <laughs> Georgia State. Come on now. I was going to say Georgia Southern. I'm like, that's wrong. <laughs> so yeah. ATL, what has ATL added to your, your musicality? Character. Hmm. I say that. Because I almost... Not to, not to make it sound a certain way, but it almost became another Berkeley experience because I did, I did struggle a little bit up there because, you know, it's kind of intimidating being around all of those talented people. Yeah. And I almost had that same experience, but when I came here to Georgia State, it was less pressure to be me, I guess. So I, when I got to that school of music, most of them are opera singers or they had the jazz band and stuff like the jazz musicians um of course orchestra so when i got there i was music management and there was only a few of us in there and that really it gave me a chance to really be myself and find my musicalness like i couldn't do it at berkeley because it was just so much happening here <laughs> so George, moving down here and going to Georgia State and just working in Atlanta, period, has definitely built my character a lot. Like nice. Yeah. Nice. You've been able to, to home in on who you are as yeah. a creative. As a... Yeah, because then it was necessary because sis started getting lost in the sauce. But oh. Yeah. I, I, yeah. But I found myself. So. <laughs> but you found yourself. That's the here point. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, so you've worked with some amazing people, Tiana Taylor, Baby Rose, uh, Janelle Monae, Roma Jean Arthur of, of Wonderland Records, like incredible. But you are an artist in your own right, and that is why you are here. That is why we're talking this evening. Mm -hmm. You've got music already out, and you've got an EP and a full-length album on the way, which I cannot wait for. Mm -hmm. That is freaking exciting. Um, yeah. So how is that journey from behind the scenes to the front lines of music been for you? Long and dramatic. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not even on front. A lot of it had to do with me being too scared to do stuff mm -hmm. because I became so self-critical and so controlling of what I wanted to sound like, what I wanted people to know me as. It just took me longer than it should have to mm -hmm. figure it out, but I don't regret it because sometimes long and dramatic is necessary for yeah. you to sh get shaken out. And if it gets super dramatic, that's when it's like, all right, you gotta like, go ahead. 
somewhere else. So the process really, it really showed me who I am a lot. <laughs> and it surprised, it surprised me. Like, even to this day, I still surprise myself compared to how I was when I first started writing again. Because before the album, I started writing an album, I hadn't written for like four years. So, wow. yeah. And one of my friends, one of my close, close friends, we were just chilling and he was like, well, we just gonna write something right now. And I'm like, I don't know about that because I haven't written. He was like, nah, and he just starts playing this, playing chords. And I just started right into it. And I couldn't believe it just came out. And ne next thing you know, more songs came out. And next thing you know, I got songs for an album. So yeah, it's still coming along, but I think you're gonna like it. I, I know I'm gonna like it. I cannot wait. <laughs> Yeah. And we're actually going to get into one of your songs a little bit later because it's on your list. It, it is amazing. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just jump into this list and we'll listen a little bit and we'll chit chat. The first song on your list is a super duper classic. Everybody knows it as soon as it comes on. It's Moments in Love by Arch of Noise. Also, yeah. I was today years old when I found out that they were from the UK. I had no idea. Man, the UK be having the vibes for a lot. Like for real. Like, I want to, I really want my music to go overseas because, child, they be having the vibes for real. Oh, yeah. Ooh, but that's another conversation. <laughs> hey, we can talk about that. Let's listen yeah. to a little bit and then we'll talk some more, okay? Mm -hmm. Whole vibe, whole vibe. Before we get lost. <laughs> Before we get lost in the sauce. Before. Yes. <laughs> so how did that song change your life besides being, like, the jam? Well, you remember Quiet Storm? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of oh, course. Goodness, I'm laughing. <laughs> because you know, driving home at night and you hear Quiet Storm. Well, that's how it was on the Philly station. <laughs> yeah, Quiet Storm. Yeah, same. And then that song came on, and I was a child, like a child, not even, probably not even five yet. Man, I heard that song and my mind was blown. And I don't know why. I think it was because that was my first time hearing, first of all, a vibe. Mm -hmm. Second of all, hearing an, an, an instrumental that moved like that. And that wasn't, how do you say? I don't want to say corny, but you know, sometimes instrumentals, it could go, it could just go on for a long time and it's not very interesting. But yeah. like yeah. when they were adding their different instruments, mm -hmm. it literally felt like the name of the song. And that was the first time I had really acknowledged music as expression of a feeling or a moment or something like that. And I was a little kid, but after that, whenever it would come on in the car, I would be so excited like so excited and it's such a i don't know it's just chill maybe it's because i was a hyper child and it chilled me down i don't know maybe that's why but i don't know it's just it's just so dope oh yeah and warm yeah that's mm. warm. That, that part that's so part. how has that warmth and, and chill influenced your creation um I noticed a, a long time ago, I kept trying to like make up beat songs and I have some, but <laughs> sometimes I, I would feel like I needed to have one because as an artist, there are certain songs that you need to pull the people in. But I always just gravitated towards songs like that, that were just groovy. It's something, it's just something about groove and swag that's in a song that captures <laughs> me. And that's really what I get out of a lot of the artists and then you add feeling and emotion on top of that it's over so it's yep. like i try to bring that raw vibey quirkiness to raw emotion and that kind of started that wave a little bit so nice. yeah nice that totally makes sense I, I hear it i hear it in your music for real yeah yeah. So the next song on the list takes us in a different direction. It's I Hate You by Molly Music, one of the earlier cuts from Molly Music. Yeah. We're going to listen to a little bit of that joint, and then we'll talk about it, all right? Ooh, yes. <laughs> 
Hey. Ah. Right, right. And we jamming. We jamming for Jesus. <laughs> Man, that song. Ciao. Tell me. Tell me. Man. Like, so for those of you who may not know or whatever. I was going to be a gospel artist initially. That was the first thing because I didn't really realize I was I was meant for music until I was like 15. And that's when I decided to really pursue it. Mm -hmm. But Berkeley gave me some of the best music that helped me find out what my sound is. And that one, as far as gospel, it's like it was so like in my face. But at the same time, it's like, I'm in your face, but I'm telling you how God has changed my life and how much the devil can go ahead somewhere. And mm -hmm. I'm ashamed to say it as a young person. And back then, you know, not even back then, you know how it is with being a gospel artist and being in the church and all that other stuff. It's sometimes hard to be to do what God is giving you if it doesn't sound like traditional gospel or doesn't sound holy enough. And mm -hmm. so, in my opinion, like, it's more of a question, like, what do y'all expect people to do with those gifts? Like, if, if God is sending you the way your music sounds and they're putting it out and they're like, that's not of God, it's like, how? If, especially if we're talking about gospel, so with mm -hmm. them, and he came out like that and I have like a lot of gospel favorites like Mary Mary and Warren Campbell like yeah I, I just couldn't even pick a song from them because it's just them but mm -hmm. it's like he came out like yo devil I hate you you can get on my face it was gritty it was like what's up like it was gospel expression and that's something that kind of started being lost and he yeah. just if you listen to his other music, it's so theatrical and big, and that's how God is, and I feel like that's what music should convey, because God is bigger than a building, you know, and yeah. it's like, there are certain people that can reach other people, and he gave me that, like, hearing that song the first time, and then the first time I saw him live, boy, that was it, yeah. was like, oh, nah, nah, he the one. And he really yeah. like opened me up to not be afraid to go for it. Him and Kier, she is. But child, we gonna leave her alone. Cause that is beautiful. That is beautiful. So I think honestly in various genres, but especially in gospel music, any artist that has moved the needle forward in that genre in particular has had pushback. If I think of Molly Music, if I think of the Clark Sisters, if I think of Mary Mary, go way back, they've always faced pushback because it didn't sound like what's traditionally known as mm -hmm. gospel music. Um, no. So it takes a certain amount of bravery, I think, even if you're not doing gospel, to carry your faith with you into yeah. what you do as a creator. Um, how do you keep that going even though you don't consider yourself a gospel artist now? I just write about life because yeah. we're, we're all living life. And I feel like that's what gospel music is supposed to be because if you read songs songs is about life like they be in there That's crying and sad and ready to like just lose their mind mm -hmm. but they're they wrote it out and psalms is one of the, like my favorite books of the bible because it got me through a lot of things you know, yeah. and it's like, yeah. why can't our music be like that? I love how Todd Delaney is singing. He did the album singing the Bible. It's like, mm. hello, it's mm. that. So I just try to talk about life because I need God in every point of my life. So why not write about it? Yes, absolutely. You know, you know, I understand one hundred percent. Oh yeah. my God. So yes, so moving forward, the next song on your list is Diamonds and Pearls by the one and only Prince. The one and there only. is no other. There will be no other. Not Y'all, let's listen to just a little. 
special shout out to Rosie Gaines. Wherever you are, we love you. We love you. You made that song. And also, uh, what's that joint from the Goofy movie? Ah. Uh, I can't think of the name of the song. Stand out of the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was her singing them little high notes and stuff. Rosie Gaines. Man. Rosie Gaines. Come on. Woo. But anyway, I enough of my talking. We so tell me. Song, All right, we done. That's it. That's it. Rosie Gaines. Thank you. Like, Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> no, but Diamonds and Pearls, my dad used to always, he's an entrepreneur and he works mm -hmm. in media. So he used to be up super late. I'm a night owl too. So mm -hmm. he would be up super late blasting prints at night, but also in the car. So I remember like the first time I heard that song, it was just so powerful. Like the bass line, and the everything, the modulations, the mm -hmm. rosy games, the <laughs> the rosy games. <laughs> like it was like such a big song, and it was just such a simple con concept. If I gave you diamond and diamonds and pearls, if I could, I would give you the world. Like, yeah. and they made it humongous, and it was like the first song. I remember like really singing at the top of my lungs. Like I was with the games. And it was like I could feel what they were talking about. Like, dang man, you could give me the world. <laughs> Word? Yeah. yeah. But that also showed me that Prince is a genius because he does everything himself. <clears throat> he fought for that. He fought for himself. And he knew his work, and it was all in the music. But that one, psh, what else is there to say, man? What can you say? What can you say? So, of course, Prince was big on ownership, um, mm -hmm. independence, and, and having ownership of your music. Um, how is that for you as an independent artist? Is that something that's important to you? And you studied music business, so you get it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep this short. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. I, it's very important to me. Ownership is very important, especially as a music kid who grew up in the behind the music era and like mm -hmm. true life era and yep. watching and learning from that. And I'll be like, don't want that to happen to me. So, I'm going to pay attention to what's happening to them. And then when I get older, I'm going to learn about it. So, hey, Sal, how you doing, girl? Sorry. <laughs> but um, it just, I knew how to sing. I sang in front of people at, at church and stuff. I wanted to know how am I going to own what I'm creating <clears throat> and use it to take care of myself and my family and also reach the world how it's supposed to. Because that ownership if you don't have it or if you don't have all of it, you can lose a lot of yourself. And we've seen it happen time and time again. And mm -hmm. they always know our work when they're trying to own our stuff because they know how much they can make off of it. So to me, ownership is important because that means if you won't buy me for this, it's like what Master P said on Solange's album. Like they offer him a million dollars and he was like, well, that mean I'm worth 40 or 50 million, so I'm going to do this myself. Exactly. Yeah. Master P, the bajillionaire. So right. Ownership is important, and Prince definitely, definitely taught me that. Facts. Facts. Same. Mm -hmm. Same. Absolutely. Um, so the next song on your list is by another uh, set of artists that have gone the independent route and really owned that space. It's just because my Jay Davy featuring Fonte, Fonte alone. Yeah. This is a, that's a jam right here. Hey. We gonna listen to it a little bit, then we gonna chat about it. So groovy! It's so groovy. Yes, vibes all day, all day. Ooh, so tell me, how did that song change your life? Um, I don't remember what day it was, but I remember another Berkeley moment. 
we used to share songs with each other all the time. So mm -hmm. one of my friends, Jeremy, he was like, yo, E, like, you really need to listen to this group. Like, you would really love them. And he, I think he either sent it to me or played it for me. I can't remember. But man, that joint started playing. And I was just like, Ooh, it was just so in here with it. Like, mm -hmm. and the lyrics were funny. It was like, just because you this, 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 like, that don't mean you can do this. And I was like, that is so real because as a woman as a black woman especially we deal with a lot of situations like just because this happened doesn't mean you can do that so mm -hmm. that really like hit me but it was the sound like it was like i found my family it was like that because mm -hmm. it was that vibey mid-tempo groovy swaggy feeling but it's telling you like something she probably experienced or something they probably experienced. And right. just, I was like, yes, now I can learn from them and find my own sound. They actually have this other song. It's just an instrumental called Interception. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this song, driving in the car to that song. And I got home and I just sang. That was the first time I just sang with no verses. I just sang what I felt. And yeah. it was so, it was crazy how easy it just came out, man. Like, it just, it blew my mind. But Jay Davey, they are incredible artists. And they definitely paved the way for a lot of people today. Oh, yeah. Their vibes are crazy insane. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to them. We, yes. we know y'all out there living life, but we, we appreciate the music y'all giving us for real. Please. Absolutely. Please. We are grateful. I know I am because they are killing. Facts. Facts. So I feel like along this list, we picked up pieces of what makes Erica Janae. We picked up the vibe. We picked up singing about life and being truthful and honest. Um, we picked up the dynamics and also the ownership of the business part of things. So now that brings us to your music. The yeah. next song is, is Love Universal. Oh, I love this one. I love it. I, I love, love it. it. Ooh, it's so yes, cool. as you should, as you should. So yeah, we we gonna play this whole thing because we need y'all to hear this thing. Oh. So everybody, welcome. This is Love Universal by Erica Janine. Oh my god! For real, for real. That's all these entire wave, an entire wave. Jason. <laughs> Ma'am. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I'm not playing with you today. <laughs> no, no, but seriously. Seriously, like you really honed in on something. For real. For real. So tell me, like, who were your collaborators on that song? Um, and it was me and Remy. Remy Williams. Oh, yes, yes. And one nice. time, me, him, and Darnell Stocksell, we were okay. working, we were at uh, Stocks' studio. And we were just playing each other tracks because I wanted some feedback from them, too. And we <laughs> were just playing the tracks, and he was like, yo, I got this track that I have. I think, you know, you might like it or whatever. And he played that, John, and I was like, give it to me right now. Because it's mine, okay? <laughs> it is mine. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know what I'm going to write to it, but it's going to come out because this is too good. So mm -hmm. I actually, so fun fact, my album is called Freedom in Blue. And it's basically about the characteristics of the color and what they mean and how they relate to me and all that. So love mm -hmm. universal is one of the characteristics. Like it, it's love universally, that color. Right. So nice. I thought about this song and this I'm just gonna say it. It's it it came from a place of I guess growing up mm -hmm. and a little bit of frustration, but also realization that 
everybody's not going to be able to reciprocate what you give them. Woo, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. Oh my god. <laughs> These life lessons you're dropping on them. Woo. <laughs> T. Mm. Shoot. Mm. I just. Basically, that's it. It's hard to get that back, or it's hard to understand why you're not getting it back. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a very super giving person. And honestly, it's like, I'm not going to put this on all black women, but you know, mm -hmm. people expect us to be so giving all the time. And when yeah. we ask for help, where, where, mm -hmm. like, we aren't that protected. We aren't that loved. So how are we supposed to feel? But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I used to pray about this all the time because I thought, I'm like, God, why would you make me so loving? Why? Because it's frustrating because I'm trying mm -hmm. to love people and help them through their things. And it's, 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 I drained myself really because I just didn't understand. But at the same time, I learned that love is also a gift. So even though I might have experienced those moments where I gave and didn't get any in return. Sometimes it's not about expectation. Sometimes that person just needs the love. And I just learned to be that person. That's why if you see me posting on people's stuff, it's mad exc exclamation points. I'm always super hyped because people deserve to be seen and loved and cared for just because, you know? Yep. Like one of the lines was, what was it? Tell me how far you fly just to look me in the eye. Mm. Like, that just, that explains it pretty much, you know? So, that is beautiful. yeah, it was like the first song in a long time where I was able to freely express myself. I wrote this song in 20 minutes and cried the entire time. Wow. Wow. This is, this is the one, it's like this one song it's just me. It's just all the sounds, the the words, the feeling, the wave, the yeah. So that's how that song came about, and I'm very proud of it. And I'm able to listen to it like somebody else wrote it. That's what makes me extremely elated because I just listen to that song and just vibe like somebody else wrote it, and that's important to me. So yeah. <sighs> yeah. That's I completely understand. That's, that's a so as, as a giver, as an, an empath, which I, I know you are, how do you balance that out, you know, with giving freely without expectation, but not allowing yourself to be so drained that you're not functioning at your best as a person, um, yeah. not even to mention as a creator? Um, I recently figured this out, but the way I learn to give without expecting is to give what I was giving to everybody else to myself. Cause ah. I wasn't, mm. I was sometimes, but other times I wasn't. Cause you know, going through your twenties, you just living your life and just doing stuff. Cause you're kind of trying to find out what it is that fits you and your personality or just your life in general. Sure. You're trying to put the pieces of your life together. And it just, Mm -hmm. that's like the best way I can explain it really it's it's. Mm, I can't explain it it's just it's it's great it's a great feeling because I don't think I felt like this in a very 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 long time because yeah. it's not that I stopped giving love to other people it's just that I can't keep giving to everybody else and I'm not giving it to myself. I'm depleted. All low, empty, and crusty. What, mm -hmm. How am I give that to somebody? I don't want no crusty love, so why would I give it to somebody else? Not <laughs> crusty love. Not crusty love. <laughs> so, that helped me balance it. 
just giving it to myself because and it's good practice yeah absolutely absolutely it starts with you first mm -hmm. um i, I just want to say with that song in particular i love the meaning behind the lyrics i love to know what it means to you personally that vocal is so slinky and smooth and you slide it in and out i love that vocal Thank and them you. harmonies are just oh, oh they're, they're gone they're here yeah. they're gone <laughs> how did you approach the vocal on, on that record well i told myself to just keep it simple because i always have a lot of ideas and i'm always trying to mm -hmm. figure them out so <clears throat> basically i i just told myself just hear what you're hearing and just sing it and whatever you feel put in there and even if even when I started adding more ideas, I let myself add them and then I took them out because it's like, nah, I got to stay simple with this. Yes. And it has to be, it just had to make sense. And just simplicity made sense. And it taught me to calm down my singing because we have, well, I had an issue with not singing like myself and trying to sing like everybody else and <laughs> same same yeah, yeah. and it, it definitely got difficult moving here because it's like you know it's real life i'm not in school anymore so mm -hmm. i'm really trying to figure out what i sound like but i figured it out and i realized my voice is mine and i can do whatever i want with it and somebody else can't do it i mean they can yeah. sing the same notes but it won't come across the same way because they're mine. There's nothing else I can do about that. So how I'm going to slack this out? How? How am yeah. I going to be, be myself? How am I going to do this and inspire other people to be themselves? Because in the way I dress, people have always been like, oh, my God, I dress like this now. Like, I've incorporated more colors because you da, 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 da. And I'm like, people are really paying attention to me, and they do hear what I'm saying. And I mm -hmm. thought nobody was listening to me. It's like everybody listening to me except for me. What am I doing? Like, come on, sis, sing the song and be on your merry way. So right. Do this, man. Right. But yeah, yeah, that. That is amazing. <laughs> I, I love the growth that I've seen in you as a person and you as a performer in particular. One of the songs that I love seeing you perform is Guill Guillotine. Editing by John Bellion, which you put on your list as a little bonus cut. So we're going to listen to a little bit of that and then we'll talk more about it. That's a record right there. That's a whole record. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me why, why you connect with that one because I know you do. I've seen you perform it live. You kill it. You kill it. Thank you so much. You were actually at the first performance of that. That was the first time I ever performed that. Really? Yeah, that was that was my first time using that looper too. And you did that too. So I'm look like, at you just doing I things. I'm so nervous, like we were at a hard <laughs> rock, and I'm like, oh, I'm up here with this looper. I just learned it. God help me, please. So I made it through, as you know, because you were there. But, Absolutely, it was a great show. Yeah, the first time I heard that song, it was just. It hit me like a ton of bricks. And mm. I was like, I need to sing this. I need to sing this. But at the time, I didn't really have anywhere to sing it. But when that opportunity came up, I was actually, you you know, I was sitting there. With, I was singing with Joy. And she was like, well, if we got an hour-long set, you're singing a song. And I'm like, no, nah, this is your show. She was like, no, you're singing a song. So Okay, Joy. Right. <laughs> I was like, all right, boss, you got it. So... I um I chose that song and at first I almost didn't sing it because nobody really knew who it was. Mm -hmm. And that was something that always got me growing up because I grew up listening to everything, but I was a 90s pop kid too. And yeah. as a young black girl, you don't want to play I mean, a lot of people love in sync, but at the same time, a lot of black people will get clowned for that or get clowned for listening to stuff like that. So when I heard this, I was like, yo, this is fire, but nobody really knows it, and you want to keep the crowd, so I'm just not. But Brick Liam is actually the one who really convinced me to do it, 
because mm -hmm. he one time he told me he was like just sing the songs you want to sing put these people on so they can learn new music and they can learn through you and i'm like yeah. you're right so yeah. he gave me the confidence to perform that song and that song it's the words are so good like yeah. they hit me so hard and the lyrics make me think about God because it's like the song is basically like I'm telling you everything about me all my bones in a closet and you still here and you love me anyway even when I lose my head guillotine I'm like right man write the song yeah you know? yeah but yeah it just it blew my mind and he produces all his own stuff I'm all of my favorite artists or biggest influences are producers who produce all of their own music like mm -hmm. him prince ryan leslie um Ooh. warren campbell warren campbell beast beast i have to meet him or work in the same room with him or something because that thing he has written so many freaking songs and they're so amazing. I just, I have no words for him. All I want to know is, Lord, will you do it? Amen. Because I need to meet him. And John Bellion, too. John Bellion saw that video, child. He did. Yes. yes. He saw the video. Yes. I think the, he produced the show. Mm -hmm. He played in the show, too, that one time he came here. And he showed it to him, and he was like, that video is dope. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was losing it, man. Yeah. Crazy. But yeah, that song, that's the one that really broke me out of my shell and was like, sis, you can do this. You can do it. Just do stuff how you hear it. You'll be fine. Just do it. I mean, and you say it broke you out of your shell. Sitting in that audience, I felt like I received you in a new way. Oh. I felt like I received you in a new way. Like, oh, this is who she is. This is her standing in her courage, standing in her artistry. Oh, it's about to go massive for me. <laughs> oh, my God. Massive. I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask you to tell me what your experience was in that is just, wow. Absolutely. Is I, I knew the song, but still it came differently from you. It, it it was it came differently from you, so that was amazing. That just thank you for that. That just yeah, that was good. Yeah, my mom said yeah, that was good. <laughs> I hear you, mama. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. Because absolutely open it. And after what Shantae can came up to me and was like, "Yo," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Right." You know? It's Shantae. Shut up. Shut up. He's so sweet. But yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing about John to me, I think, is that, um, you know, he makes secular music. You know, he cusses. He, he's, he's raunchy. He's ratchet with it a little bit. Um, but God and faith is a through mm -hmm. line in his music. It yeah. never leaves what he does. Um, so I think that really ties into what we've been talking about the entire time, how you can write about life and you can keep it real. You can keep it 100, but you still have faith and you still have God, that higher power in what you do. And it never leaves. That's like some moat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Exit, Ooh, disgusting. Disgusting. I want to slap him too. <laughs> Fight you. Yeah, him too. That we not even gonna bring him into this. Mm, he already in it. It's too late. He already in it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. He's so good. They're all good. Oh yeah, for sure. And and you are good. You are amazing. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time to join me on five songs that changed my life. I love you. I appreciate you so much. Before you go, tell the people where they can find you and what you've got coming up. Um Follow me everywhere, Erica Janae G. Um, I have a link in my bio. It'll take you to my music. And also, what's on there? Oh, When I Sang with Baby Rose, when I did backgrounds with her, that's on there too. Mm -hmm. um, I have a surprise coming. Oh. So, that. And that. That's about it. 
I'm just ready. Honestly, I'm just ready to wing it and just do stuff and be the entrepreneur and the musician and the artist and the person that I've been wanting to be a long time. So follow me everywhere so y'all can watch what happens. Because I'm giving yes. you the <laughs> Yes. Well, again, thank you so much for joining me. This has been amazing. Take care of yourself. Bye, bye mama. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.